Dean Diane McFarland. Wow, it's been eight years. I can't. I can't believe it. It's been so fast. It feels like it's been fast. Does it feel fast to, to it you? It feels right? like it's just been a week. Um, it's gone by so fast. And um, I was just thinking, sitting here, I did my first video interview in this very room eight years ago. I'd just been named dean and, and came up to visit with everybody. And uh, I was interviewed. And here I am in just a flash. You started in 2013 in January. And you could argue that you have probably one of the coolest offices in the building <laughs> overlooking everything and kind of the fishbowl approach. Do you remember your first day, like walking in and say, wow, I'm, I'm Dean of the College of Journalism and Communications? I absolutely do. In fact, I had been in that office to visit with three prior deans. I remember coming in and sitting in that office to talk with Ralph Lowenstein, with Terry Hines, and with John Wright. And it was surreal. Uh, for it to be my office, but you know, I was uh, meeting with someone and I looked out the window and I said, you know, I just love sitting here and watching the students come to class. And they said, Diane, you do know this is an interstate highway to Wrights Union. <laughs> These are not all our students, <laughs> but it's a great vantage point on the world and on, you know, on campus and I've just thoroughly enjoyed it. So you, we all know that you came from industry into the academic environment, and I know you did your homework, and I know you know the college intimately, um, but it had to be a little bit um, of a change, right, coming into uh, the academic world. What surprised you most about UF, about the college, in your first year or two here? I think what surprised me the most was the extent to which faculty and colleagues are so collegial and, and collaborative. Everybody is you know, pulling uh, toward the same goals, and that's not the reputation of faculty, uh, just as it's not the reputation of newsrooms, for example. And I had the same experience throughout my whole career in newsrooms. Uh, certainly, you know, you have folks who um, are um, very focused on their own interests. That's going to be the case with any ambitious organization. But for the most part, everybody is here to work together uh, for the, the betterment of the institution and on behalf of the students. And that's really um, you know, an aligning force when there is a, a righteous mission like that and uh, everybody can, uh, can work toward that goal. I've always thought the dean has to be one of the hardest jobs to, to walk into, especially if you're not used to an academic environment. You have to deal with interpersonal things, subject matters that you may or may not be as familiar with, fundraising, the operations. I'm not asking you to evaluate yourself, but if you had to say like, what are the most, the three or four most important traits of a good, effective dean, what would they be and like, how did you strategize to prepare for the, all the different things that were happening? Well, I'll just observe that I think being a publisher was the best preparation I could have had. Um, I had come up you know, through the newsroom starting as a reporter, working my way up, but I was a uh, publisher for the longest period of time, and as publisher, you're over all operations. So I had to learn about the press room, I had to learn about delivery, I had to learn sales. Um, the advertising department reported to me, so there was that fundraising, if you will, um, piece of it. I had a lot of stakeholder groups. There was the community. Um, there was our corporate stakeholder group, and then there were my colleagues, the organization that, that I had the obligation to lead. And so it felt analogous to a dean's role. Now, obviously my blind spot was not having an academic background. In fact, when the recruiter called me, I called the provost to say, are you serious? Um, you would really consider someone who hasn't come up um, through the academy and he said that he and then President Bernie Matcham were very serious because of all the changes that were occurring in the industries and disciplines represented at this college and uh, I'm obviously very biased because I've enjoyed the role so much but I do think my professional experience in a role like publisher was good preparation. So in your note to faculty and staff, January 7th, 2013, this was your final line. There are so many exciting opportunities ahead of us, and I look forward to advancing them with you. So as you look back now, what are sort of the three or four big things that, that stand out to you as, 
you know, really special moments or initiatives under, under your leadership? Well, you know, there were so many opportunities. Um, that is a very long list because this organization was so positioned um, uh, to rise rapidly. It had been held back by the recession and, you know, timing in life is everything because I set foot in this college as dean uh, the morning after the Great Recession ended. I mean, it felt literally like it was timed that precisely. So unlike John Wright, who had to, you know, cut and, and retract, which is such a difficult challenge for a leader, I came at a time when expansion was, uh, was beginning, and so I could really ride that wave. Um, but, you know, some of the areas that I am uh, really proudest of, first of all, um, our scholarship grew. We increased the number of researchers here by more than a dozen. Uh, during my watch. We invested in research. Um, we launched new centers, and I'm so proud of the success of our centers. Of course, the Breckner Center was already here, and a great heritage um, with that center. And then, uh, you know, it has now grown and expanded in, in some very meaningful ways. The STEM Center for Translational Communication, so proud of that operation. That really has given us street cred around research. Um, you know, the folks down the hill, as we call UF Health, uh, look up to our communication researchers, our health communication researchers, and uh, that entity has brought in a lot of research dollars that have, um, you know, been uh, very important to uh, the esteem of our college. And then I would also cite the, the work we've done in, with our culture, and particularly around diversity. Uh, we've become a much more inclusive culture and I could not be prouder of that. Um, the industry needs more diversity and as a college um, we had that obligation and um, I feel good about the progress we've made. There's so much more to be done but we're positioned to do it and I'm excited about what the future holds there. I think related to some of the things you've mentioned, um, it sort of goes to the heart of the core mission of the, of the college. Have, how have you seen the core mission of the college change, evolve, grow in your time here? Well, you know, I, I, I'll go back to research. I think that research has uh, risen in prominence and emphasis at this college. Our investment has grown significantly. But at the same time, we've kept that balance that we always talk about, um, you know, the balance between undergraduate and graduate between professional immersion and uh, scholarship and research. And um, I'm equally as proud of the strides we've made with our immersion programs. The INC, Meyer Lowe, has taken that in new directions. So proud what we're doing there. Fresh Take Florida, great new program that, you know, those stories written by our students are being published literally all over the world, um, you know, particularly, of course, in, in this country. And then launching the agency. I'm really proud of that because when I came here, there was uh, not a college-sponsored immersion opportunity for our advertising and public relations students. And, you know, that also meant a lot to me because I think the fear was that with me as dean, it would be all journalism all the time. That's my degree here. Um, that was my career. My whole career was in newspapering, and um, to um, you know strike some uh, achievements for other disciplines really meant a lot to me. Now, I've heard you say this, and I don't think I'm misquoting you, but at the award ceremony every year, you say that this is one of your favorite nights of the year. Yes. So I'm going to say. We'll put your Mount Rushmore of favorite days up there, and I would award ceremony. I would imagine commencement. What are your other two favorite days of the of the of the academic cycle? Do you have anything else that would be on that? Um, you know, it's those two. I mean, you know, my gosh, it's all about the students. That's why we're here. And I remember when I was named a distinguished alumnus of the University of Florida. Terry Hines was dean at the time, and I was on stage with her. And of course, this was when the commencement um, you know, was uh, several colleges. And when it came time for, the, uh, for our college, for our graduates to walk across stage, she leaned over and says, would you like to shake their hands? And I'll never forget that day. That was, that was such a joy. 
Um, and I think that kind of played into my decision to apply for this job was that sense of setting so many lives on a promising course. Um, you know, there's nothing better. So you made reference to this a little earlier, but when the press release came out of your um, taking over as, as dean, Bernie Mashon was quoted as saying this, Diane has a comprehensive view of the rapidly changing media industry and the challenges it faces. So we learned in 2020 that it wasn't just the media industry that was changing, the whole world was changing with the pandemic and uh, racial injustice that was um, being spotlighted throughout um, the country and the, and the world. I also say that leadership sort of comes together in crisis and really makes a mark in crisis. How would you evaluate what 2020 was like in your last year as dean here and how you managed the uncertainty, the conflict, and the craziness? Well, you always feel inadequate to a task that huge. Um, there was no blueprint. There was no, there was no example, no history. Um, There's so many new factors coming into play and the convergence of them all, it was the perfect storm. And then of course, for a period of time, we were limited to virtual interaction and to a great extent still are. Um, that was handicapping as well. But what I tried to do was be present and to communicate um, frequently. So we had a lot of um, you know, town halls. We had um, Zoom sessions that were simply just to listen to everybody and to make sure that, um, that the dean's office was considering everything that needed to be considered. And you know, there was a great deal of pain and uncertainty um, throughout the year and it wasn't the way I envisioned spending my last year as Dean quite the contrary but I'm glad I was here mm -hmm. to do that I'm glad I was um, able to be present because I think it would have been um, even more difficult for a new Dean who didn't know the organization and the things to look out for yeah. and I'm so proud of this organization for how it's handled it oh my gosh I mean the the quick move to online. I mean, that pivot was literally overnight. It was, you know, it was less than a week. And um, just the sensibility about what needed to be done and the concern about colleagues and everybody rallied and it, it speaks volumes about the caliber of this organization. One of the many things that I've been impressed with is ever since your announcement that you were retire, going to retire, never stopped never stop charging ahead, never stop challenging us. But the, the time's gonna come when you're gonna transition. Will there be anything left on your to-do list? You know, I'm gonna be squeezing every <laughs> last drop out of this job. Um, I'm so reluctant about the retirement. But you know, there are two things that um, I have I've committed to get done before I leave. One is to make sure that leadership for the trust consortium is in place and a plan is implemented to carry that forward because never has it been more essential. And the other is President Fox asked me to lead an initiative to establish UF's core values. And um, that's near and dear to my heart because I've always said, you know, leaders, um, you always um, lead by placing the values um, front and center. So uh, those two things will be completed. And then along the lines, there are other smaller things. I'm trying to reach out to all of our um, major supporters, um, whether it's as volunteers or through financial support. I'm having conversations with many of them. You know, I think the thing that um, is most painful for me is that I can't have hallway conversations. So I'm going to be staying in Gainesville, and you, you all will probably get sick of seeing me because I'll be around to um, you know have those conversations and to reconnect with the college before you know I uh, disappear. I know from personally I'm so appreciative of what I've learned from you in terms of leadership and grace and professionalism and decision making and so many things and I think a lot of my colleagues would think the same same thing, but I'm curious as to what you feel like you've learned. I've learned a lot. I think that um, I, f I still feel challenged in certain areas. One is, I talked about inclusion, and <clears throat> the inclusion and in decision making continues to be a challenge for me because of the size of this organization and the divergent 
points of view and interests. And um, it's knowing when you have to just say, okay, it's time for me to make the decision. That's what a dean's supposed to do. Um, so, you know, I, I still don't feel like I quite got that calibrated right. Um, I know there were times when I wish I could have um, called the whole organization together and really led the organization through an inclusive decision-making process, but so often that's not possible. And the other thing that I really wish I had had time to do is to walk around more. Um, I was on the road more than I intended to be, but I came to understand the, the extent to which that was necessary to build the capacity for the college. And then when I was here, my schedule was so um, frenetic. And um, oftentimes I'd be you know, running down the hallway to get a glass of water and someone might want to talk and I was late for a meeting and that, you know, I just hated that uh, about the role, but um, it just, uh, just, you know, the way it is. So continuing to look to the future, what do you think the college needs to do or the greatest opportunities for the future, for the next level, um, for just continued development and growth and opportunity? Yeah, you know, this, this institution has consistently and continually been high achieving. And um, I feel like it is positioned better than ever to take some significant leadership roles at a much higher level, at a national level. Not that it doesn't already in certain um, narrow areas, but I think there's some broad areas emerging that we can, we, um, can take a, a leadership role in. And uh, one is um, you know, the nation is gripped by this culture of misinformation. It is a huge problem. It's affecting everything about our lives. It's undermining our democracy. And um, we've tried to put some things in place that will position the college to make a meaningful impact there. And uh, other organizations are looking to do the same, but I think this, this college is particularly well positioned because we sit on a campus that is so intensely comprehensive. And there's so many disciplines represented here, call other colleges that want to work with us on this issue through the Consortium for Trust in Media and Technology, but in many other ways as well. And this feeds into all of our disciplines. It will elevate our research even more because there are some fascinating research projects going on already. So I see that as um, a, a, a very big arena for us to play a significant role. And then there are a number of other areas where, uh, for example, science communication and helping um, scholars, researchers, scientists talk about the work that they do. And this is an effort that we have underway with the Center for Public Interest Communications, with the STEM Center for Translational Communications. Various other programs at this college um, are, are designed to help academics uh, do a better job of public-facing communication. Um, I could just go on and on. There's so many different areas. Public media, we're taking a much bigger role there under the leadership of Randy Wright, uh, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, um, has our address. They know what we're doing here. They're interested in emulating the Florida Public uh, Radio Emergency Network. Um, so there are just many ways that this college is positioned to, uh, to take a higher uh, and, and larger role. All right, so we're wrapping up. So now that means it's time for the rapid fire questions. Right. On average, how many emails do you receive a day? Hundreds, literally, um, hundreds. Besides Weimer Hall, what's your favorite spot on campus? Uh, the Bauman Center. Social media platform of choice? Twitter. Class in the college you would most like to teach? Oh, media ethics. Class in the college you would most like to take? Media ethics. <laughs> Number of days in your eight years here that you've seen fully wear long pants? <laughs> <See you. laughs> Even on the coldest day of the year, he shows up in his shorts. And finally, percentage chance that you will drop a mic when you leave Weimar Hall for the last <laughs> time. I love that idea. Let's make it 100%. <laughs>
So if, if I can say so, you have had a mic drop uh, reign as, as dean, and I think I speak for all of us when I say we are so, so appreciative of everything you've done for the, for the college and for all of us, students here especially. So uh, thank you so much, Diane McFarland, dean. Thank you, Ted. It's been such a pleasure to work with you and your colleagues. Thank you.